Welcome everyone to Visionary Psychics. I'm Sarah Wiseman and I am here today with one of our Visionary Psychics, Susan Rampson. So Susan, welcome to these sessions. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm just recalling, um, I have not met all of the Visionary Psychics in person, but I remember you and I met um, at an event in Denver, I yeah. think years ago, and then yeah. we've just been in connection since then. So that was a super serendipitous uh, thing that's happened. That was great, so, for sure. Yeah. So you're super interesting because you have this very interesting background that is very science and technology oriented, and you have this intuitive piece. And I'd love to just um, have you talk about how these mesh for you or how these parts make sense. They seem on the surface so different, but maybe they're not. Mm -hmm. what, what, how does that work for you? Yeah, um, I guess uh, it goes all the way back to when I was really, really little and I was connecting intuitively um, in nature to different parts of nature. And that actually started my interest in science because I wanted to learn about nature and I wanted to learn about rocks and then like old fossils or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. and it started from there. And um, so they, you think that they're on opposite sides of the stick, but what really was great about um, having a foot in both of those places is it, the science, the curiosity about science and being able to explain things with science really like propelled me into this just seeking, like, how do I explain what's happening? Mm -hmm. This doesn't, nobody, everything everybody tells me doesn't explain what this was happening right here. And that just dr drove me for my whole life. Wow. This continual um, curiosity to learn, like to, yes. to learn using multiple systems. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and to explore, it was just always so interesting and always a uh, never boring moment for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. When you are working in intuition now, um, so what's striking to me is when I organize my thoughts in third eye uh, with clairvoyance, I'm always kind of struck by, for me, it always appears like you can use it like a computer screen, like you click on a folder and then you go deeper into a journey, or it feels like it's like a video game, like you go and you see the apple and then you take the apple and then you get the key from the apple and then you go. Um, which do you think, why do you think that this journeying is so similar to how we're working now with screens like what comes to mind for you yeah boy that's so interesting i never even thought about it that way because um most of my connection on the intuitive level has always been visual on screen um even dreaming right or visioning you know in a light trance or um just imagining it Although I always was striving to see things materialize or see auras around people, or that was because I was so visual and then also feeling and knowing. So, um, and the other thing that happened was in my science quest along the way, I became involved in computers and I am a hundred percent almost a day in front of a computer. So, um, yeah, that that I, I think it's made it easier for me to keep visualizing. But the opposite side of that is I sometimes I have to intentionally stop and get away from this yeah. and reconnect. Yeah, reconnect to the um, I think a lot lately about how even 10 years ago, we weren't so screen focused or we didn't I th I'm thinking of screens as a portal, like we mm -hmm. think of third eye work as a portal or places on the earth as portals. Um, but the screens are portals too. I mean, they take us everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so sometimes it's good to just be in your immediate 
environment, like with your plant behind you, just like, well, I'm just going to be with the plant for a while and just kind of see this, but I am absolutely surrounded by covered you <laughs> here, there, everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Just to remind me that I'm, uh, you know, still part of nature here. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, as you, as you've been working with people intuitively, what kinds of things have surprised you or, um, I'm not really sure what I'm asking. I'm just kind of seeing I'll tell what you, you I, your like, mind. That's a great question because um, it took me so many years to trust what I saw that it was real, you know, a real source of information. And you helped me with that a lot. Thank you. But I mean, it took me like 50 years to get there. And um, so I'm always astonished when I'm, I just feel like I'm just the messenger, um, not emotionally attached to the message, but, um, and I'm not trying to in interpret it too much. I want the person to tell me what it means mm -hmm. to them. But when they tell me, oh my gosh, I know what that means. That is, means this, or, you know, oh, that, that uh, person that's handing a plant, that means that was what we needed to know. My husband wanted to start a farm or, you know, things like that. It was like confirmation for them. When I hear those things, I'm, I'm almost like in shock. Yeah. You know, wow. Uh, that definitely wasn't me, but I guess I, I uh, delivered the message. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it shocks me too. And I've been doing this, you know, for so long now. Um, how can it be that something can just get, picked out of the air and provided to another person. And that's the correct thing. And, um, and sometimes these things that we receive are so strange and weird, like, mm -hmm. like they, like we are receiving them, we have no idea what they mean. And then in providing them, and yet, like you said, it makes sense to the other person, but how can that, and of course, it's all about, you know, being in oneness and mm -hmm. being right. inter not only interconnected but being of the same essence that of course we can know you know what what we are because that's what we are um, yeah yeah i think um just what you just said about that is important um it's available to all of us mm -hmm. to tap in and pick that out of the air and you'll often hear like um artists or songwriters say i just it just came to me or I just, yeah. but it's always there. We just have to access it. And sometimes things are wacky because that's how they need to get through our filters. That's what yeah. I, anyway. Yeah. Tell us, yeah. Talk a little bit more about this idea of filters. What is that? How are you using that? What does that mean to you? So sometimes we alone, uh, this is just the way I see it. Could be different for anybody else. Um, we're used to, we have some, I'll say biases, right? We have some uh, predetermined, like and things that we've grown up to learn or um, things, a way we think about something. Let's just say that there's a way we think about the world or a way we think about something. And it's, it like has to come to us that way in order for us to notice it or, or believe that it's true. So you've often mentioned some, like, why are the guides wearing robes all the time? You know, like, you know, that's just, we trust people in long robes for some, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but mm. I will, I will uh, something, sometimes with, with a, uh, a guide or somebody that's trying to get something across to me, they'll go, it's almost like a cartoon or they'll mm -hmm. go out of their way to make it kooky, um, yeah. my attention. And then I'm like, okay, so I should be paying attention to this and, and passing it on. Right, right. They're making it. Yeah, like I've spoken a lot about my dad who's departed will often come in a Hawaii shirt as a departed. That's his normal. That's his vacation yeah. <laughs> clothing that he enjoys. But then when he's trying to make a different point, like he'll come in a business suit. It's like, okay, paying attention to that right. thing that's sticking out or that thing that's catching our attention differently to help us make sure we're receiving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there's a sense of humor in this whole thing. Quite. I, that's what I've noticed. Like one of uh, my guides 
is um, this old man, of course, in a brown robe, <laughs> you know, like almost like, you know, got like crazy white hair. And I said, what is your name? And he said, wiser. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. You're wiser. I get it. <laughs> you're, you're, and my other guy, it's smarter. Yeah, it's funny. It's great. So one thing I noticed, I was looking at your website, and we'll put that information below. Uh, uh, but you have two practices, well, one which I knew about and the other that I didn't. So, um, but they're both body practices. And I, I'm kind of finding as I'm talking to some of the people that are in doing the visionary psychics, a lot of people have body practice. Some people have yoga, some people have running or this and that. And you um, do Qigong. And how does that, what happens for you intuitively when you're in that practice? Yeah, um, I'm, I've learned so much through Qigong that there's like two important things. The reason I started doing it was I wanted to move in a way that wasn't going to hurt me. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's so great for that. But also, um, I want people, I want to help people experience something that they may not, they might, might kind of be um, like ignoring or filtering out. And that is that they can actually feel their chi, their life force. And there's a couple of ways to feel it. And so I, I wanted to teach a little bit of that so they could have their own um, firsthand experience of something that's a little, um, it's totally normal, but they might think it's paranormal. Mm -hmm. um, so just to say, hey, there's something else going on that is so cool that you could um, experience for yourself. And and uh, Qigong helps you build that life force and build that strength of your Qi. And, um, it, you know, for health, obviously, but it also movement helps you release a lot of things. So mm -hmm. um, I'm just finding that it's just good for so many things. Those like, three things right there. Do you find when you're, um, like on, when I'm on a bike ride, say, which I love, um, I'll often set a question in at the start of the bike ride and then use the trance of mm -hmm. the, of the movement and so forth. And um, I will receive the answer. Is, is, is that in Qigong, I would imagine quite a bit comes through right. as answers, even if you're not even sure what your question is that day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, um, when you start moving, um, so I'll say this happens to me, even if I'm vacuuming mm -hmm. a lot of rooms for something, or, you know, in the shower, but Qigong, mm -hmm. actually, when you're moving things, you're, it's almost like another way of unblocking your energy, like one ways with acupuncture, for example, it's very, very precise, but Qigong is more, more generally will unblock, and then mm -hmm. you can get your download because things are moving and things are unblocked and you often will. And sometimes it happens when you're doing the, the movements and other times when you've stopped doing the movements and you've got all this stuff, you know, coming through and it's just like, write it down. That was great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I even noticed in um, ecstatic dance, which is, right. is a, a gentle movement. Um, what I noticed showing up in the room, which very much surprised me, like all of us have had this COVID experience of how much can happen in a six by eight foot room, at least my office is really little. And, uh, you know, a lot can happen. And in doing ecstatic dance, maybe um, just dancing, and then like a portal will show up uh, like a, like there's a doorway in the room. And like, okay, walk through the door. It's, it's a very interesting, like it's journeying, not just in third eye, but we're like journeying in the body. Like we're moving into different dimensions by our body movement, which is the conscious movement, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah. so here's the part that surprised me and I didn't know we had this overlap, but you, uh, you you have on your website that you did tap dancing and i also did tap dancing and so i want to talk about this trance like in tap dancing 
you have to keep track of a lot. You have to keep track of your sides. You have to keep track of the rhythm. You have to keep track of your counting in the board. And so what, how does that play into all of this experience for you? Yeah. So tap dancing, I, you know, I did that one when I was really little in dancing school, but I started when I was three and I went till I was like 14 or something, but that is mathematical to me. So yes. it's the science part of my head. You know, it's like, um, got to get the right answer about this. And there's, you know, it's very, you, you do it right or you do it wrong. It's not, it's not um, very, um, there's a whole creative side to it, but getting the steps right is mathematical, right? To me, mm -hmm. it, it's no, uh, no overlap, uh, gray area, I would say. Um, See, yeah. Well, I want, yeah, that's so interesting because me as a non-math style brain, I always found I could never memorize it. I could never count it. I just had to like wing it and, and it would be right. Like I had to copy it yeah. by not trying to get it right. So it's almost like two different ways of getting to the same answer, which is interesting. And a lot of repetition. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Getting yeah. them up. Well, and, and that's, that's, um, Thank you. That's excellent because that is actually when we're doing this work, the practice is what allows us to keep having this channel or connection. We can't just once a month, okay, intuition practice. It's like it has to be a continual bridge or tethering, or I'm not sure what you, word to use, but we have to keep going there. Mm -hmm in order to keep that clear. Yes, I, um, I learned that that's the only way to keep um, going further and further and further, um, having more and more and more experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, it's just to keep doing it when, if I have to stop for a while or, you know, I can't get a quiet place or whatever, then I go back weeks later. Uh, I, it's kind of like I lose a little ground. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's that's why it's got to be this continual practice. And I think um, when people come and maybe at the beginning, it's kind of frustrating or confusing, or maybe even scary, like to attempt to contact the guides mm -hmm. and just kind of keep showing, keep like keeping showing up, just like try it. And maybe the first day you let go of the edginess in your body and the second day you kind of look at your fear and the third day you start to notice some subtle things changing and like then starting to notice like what's unusual or what's different or what's catching my eye and um kind of just bit by bit uh learning to navigate the other the other realms yes and also um being still for longer than a couple of minutes, if you you can build up to it, it's it's okay, however long it takes. And it doesn't have to be, you don't have to sit for like hours and hours in one place, but you start to um, get a sense for what's, how you're feeling inside and what's what's happening around you. And you start, you start building up your sensitivity. And, um, and that's one of the ways that, you know, you can um, explore further just by, because you're noticing things that you never noticed before because of distractions or filters. Yeah, yeah. Um, one thing that you and I have talked about that we're both super interested is in, we're obviously not the only beings in the universe, right? Like that's pretty clear. Um, and in talking to some of the um other people, some of the things that like, there was a lot of discussion about like plant communication and animal communication and like, are the guides, um, are they, what are like, what are they? Are they other beings in different dimensions? Are they other beings on different planets? Like, I don't really know. Uh, what have you, what, what kind of thoughts have you been having around this idea of consciousness, yeah. and it's certainly not just human consciousness. Right, right. So when I was a child, you know, I was tapping into 
nature. So plants, I did a lot of rock tapping into rocks because I like rocks. What's it feel like to be you, you know, go there, come back. Um, and then when I was like, I think in fourth or fifth grade, we had to do a science fair. And I asked my father, because he's all mechanically inclined. I said, could you build me a lie detector so I could hook it up to my plants and uh, see if I can like make some, like, the needle move? And he went like as, as far even to get the schematics to do it. Then we just couldn't pull it off in time. But um, they do like, you know, like once you can start feeling them or sensing it, into them or connecting with them you can um you can feel their consciousness you can kind of sense it and same thing so even with um weather or water or you know um other kinds of beings not just animals you know uh situations for example you can feel the consciousness of the situation i was thinking even like um systems like systems in your body and mm -hmm. um and then I did, you know, a lot of times when I talking to the guides, I do get guides come and go who are not human, you know, um, and, and sometimes they're from other planetary systems and sometimes they're just like something I can't even identify. Right. As I'm used to. Um, but I have had, um, I have had uh, experiences with um, consciousness is, and uh and even ships that were definitely um is this one of ours or is this theirs mm -hmm. and uh, and it was a direct connection with the consciousness associated with that ship mm -hmm. um for example the mm -hmm. one that i saw that was just in still coming in and out of a dimension that i saw on somebody i was with but nobody else did in the middle of the day and it was gigantic mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. So connecting with the consciousness, like it's, you know, the, sh the ships are interesting, but it's what, who are these beings that yeah. are, are there, you know, like, why are they here? Well, there was never any, um, it was always peaceful and friendly and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. And it's like, um, when we take our mind to like say vastness or oneness and then we can even though we think that's the all of it like i found we can also i don't know how to explain this to me it feels like um like a like maybe i don't really think of it this way but like you could think of it as a rainbow and then you can go up these different you know purple blue whatever green I'm not being the wrong order, but, um, or you can just kind of turn things a little, like you're in vastness, but then show me another view of vast, like if vastness is complete consciousness, not that me as a, as a person can really do that, but my part of me that's fully consciousness, all of us can do that. And then we go there. And then what if we turn it a little, or what if we look you know, we look in the past, we look in the future, we look up, we look down, we look up in different dimensionalities. And I don't really know, like, I know how to get to the guides, I know how to get to the departed, I know how to get to plants, I know how to, you know, I know how to get to past lives. But this idea of, okay, these other beings are click somewhere a little bit different. And like, how can we go there? And I think we can go there. Yeah. It's just practicing. Like, <laughs> If you kind think of that, like uh, of of yourself as this hologram uh is a way like a something more than what you're perceiving 3d you're in all the dimensions at the same time so yes. this right and if you can move your awareness to that part of you that's in that same place that they are and who, and it's probably the same for them they're in 3d somewhere right but yeah. they're really good at um the higher dimensions or the different dimensions where you can um come in and out and travel that way yeah um, and it's probably yeah well it's just making me laugh like you said humor like we often get our information while we're in the shower and probably like these other beings are taking their shower <laughs> whatever they do and they're getting us you know i don't know how that would work but they're just doing something very ordinary 
they probably don't have vacuums there. <laughs> they probably have gone beyond that. Oh my goodness. At least the ones that are, are visiting here, because I feel like, you know, they've got to be pretty, pretty far advanced to be able to travel and um, yeah. materialize, you know, their, their technology or even their consciousness is in a, in a, ahead of us in yeah. that way, maybe, yeah. Yeah. So I wonder though, like, like with how fast things have gone, like even since, you know, the one that we all know of like cell phones, like how fast that changed everything. And um, I don't know how many decades we are from travel and um, that kind of technology, but maybe it's, I'm wondering, like, maybe they're only a couple hundred years ahead. I don't know. I don't know. They exist already. We're just yeah. don't have access to them yet, but um, I do. And and even um, they may exist in in with some groups that are um, working on them. And mm -hmm. then there are others that are actually talking about what they're doing. Um, and they'll say, you know, they're trying all these different ways to do travel, say, for example. Um, so I think there's like a lot of work going on right now in all these different places and areas and um mechanisms for yeah. things like travel and energy and healing uh, yeah. so i think it's pretty exciting I, i'm i can't imagine we won't see changes come some very of it. yeah we won't see some of it so when you're working with people um in readings so one of the things for humans in this here and now is like we have a lot of emotions we go through a lot of we might have had trauma we might have had um pain or confusion um what's your way of thinking about taking a person through the process whatever situation they're in you provide the information and then kind of helping them to process what you're what you've been receiving how do you think about that um the way i usually think about it is um I, I try to stay open um, before the reading. I'll, um, you know, just say, you know, write down whatever comes to me. I, and by the way, like it, even that at that stage, and then even talking to a person, you kind of know immediately what the thing is, right? right. Uh, even if you're looking for an answer, you get the answer immediately because it's right there anyway. You just, it's not like you have to wait for it to show up. So, um, so then I'll, um, I, I just want to listen to the person where they're, you know, I need some context uh, for mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they need some from me as well. And then um, I'll, th so I don't want to ever pressure somebody. Um, I always want them to um, feel their way into what I'm conveying, you know, the message that I'm giving and to because it's not, you know, it's, it's their message. So um, they have to say what it means or, and I listen, and then I kind of um, help them along um, to interpret it maybe a little bit to, to ask questions that'll spark that interpretation for them. And then also uh, take them to the next step so that they're, you know, they have something to do um, at the end of the session, like some some insight that they can act on or something that they may want to change or um, something they want to, like um, a belief that they may want to release. Um, it kind of, I just kind of uh, try to be very gentle and um, let them uh, set the pace pretty much. And if, um, so I've noticed, you know, a lot of people had to have a rough couple of years. How do you, um, I'm not sure what I want to ask this. I was going to ask you how you deal with taking on people's emotions, oh. mm -hmm. but I feel like it's actually, I think I want to ask a different question. Um, if you were to get a person who was super resistant, like you fully were receiving it and then they were just saying no that's 
that isn't like, that's not what I want. That's, that isn't how it is. How would you navigate around resistance? Cause, cause lots of people are resistant. Like even if we're not trying, sometimes we're so excited about a reading and we really want to get the answer we think we want. And then the universe is not providing that answer. How do you kind of navigate that? Yeah. A couple of ways. Um, I, I do get that sometimes. Um, even just talking about these topics, you, you get that. And um, so the first thing I had to learn is that um, I am just the messenger. So I am, uh, my job is to deliver the message. If the person wants to accept the message, they can or not, because that's their free will. But um, sometimes people get stuck and they can't. Um, the resistance is a, they're stuck or they're, they're, they're so attached to this one outcome that they can't think of another outcome. But then I try to um, give them examples of um, that where you have a kind of a, a larger view of what's happening. And um, you may be stuck on this outcome, but um, this is waiting to come in and you can't come in until you let go of this outcome or clear it or mm -hmm. in your house, get rid mm -hmm. of your stuff. You taught me that, but, um, but, but still, it's just like, um, it's their mental blocks, their physical things. Sometimes they're, I'm um, just, I know someone that was so attached to this one outcome that I, I, she, she kept asking me for more readings. And, and I said, the message is not changing. Yeah. I, I don't want to, you know, we can't have any more readings on this, you know, like right. you have to, um, really, uh, take a different approach if you want to progress with this one thing or you can be stuck here you know yeah so I don't know if that's what you were yeah um, no that's perfect um I think I think that I think sometimes people get nervous in a reading because they think that we're some kind of oracle which we're not we're just a passageway from the message to them um and I think we do get super attached to what we want to hear. I remember working with someone uh, long ago and I had something in my life that I, I was just thinking it was going so great. It was just like the best ever. And the person said, um, just let go of the mantra that everything's perfect. <laughs> and just like, it wasn't even, it was just like relax the expectation and look at what's actually happening. Like let go mm -hmm. of all the idea that it has to be a certain way because it doesn't have to be any particular way. The universe can help us flow towards lots of pieces. So even just sometimes that relaxing of one concept and, uh, and then just noticing like mm -hmm. just and and that can be and just that little piece like maybe your client doesn't immediately start to accept what you're saying but even if they have that idea meandering in their mind later like oh what if there is another possibility and in reality there's probably many forty thousand. yeah there's but it's just like we get so stuck on and so many idea. that are so much better than yeah. the outcome they want there's just so many wonderful um, possibilities, and when when we are able to let go of the one we're we're holding on to so tight, it is amazing. You can't see it because it hasn't happened yet. But when you look in hindsight, you'll say like, "Oh, when I finally uh, relaxed my expectation about this, all of this wonderful stuff happened, and it would have never happened." Yeah. So, well, and that's why. Um... Like the way I have come to understand manifesting is like anti-manifesting. We don't go toward any particular goal or maybe we have a goal, but we're kind of relaxed about it. And then we just watch where the universe is leading us through synchronicities and events and our journeying and so forth. And um, that, yeah, there's so many possibilities. And if we just follow where we're being led, that will usually take us to some pretty amazing adventures. Yeah, so. and I don't think I've ever, I mean, it, it, I guess it could happen, but um, 
in my experience, they always get better. They don't mm-hmm. get, there might be like a rough time, but the outcome when you're out the other end, it's so much better that yeah. learn to um, just like you said, even sometimes relaxing the idea you had that you wanted to hold on to all of a sudden, all these possibilities. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like you couldn't even see before because you had your blinders on. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Well, um, Susan, thank you so much for being a part of our Visionary Psychics series. And I will put your information below. It's just been a delight to, I'm so glad we met in person. So yeah. glad we're continuing um, our relationship now. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, absolutely.